お前の目に見えていたこの世の全ての虚無。What is going on, you guys? This is your buddy, the Das Masher, and welcome back to yet another Bleach Brave Souls video. And、uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at the official mid month banner that is going to be dropping in the next coming days. And、uh, Safwi Round 3 has also made its return, so if you guys want to go ahead and summon on that, you guys can. But I really advise skipping just because of the fact that the seventh anniversary is actually coming a bit closer. So, like, that's all I gotta say. So, yeah, Karakura Battle Summons coming soon. It's gonna be a premium banner and it's gonna feature characters from the Karakura, fake Karakura Town arc. So, yeah. And we're getting a new Baragon and for the first time ever, a five star Geo. I wanted this Baragon to be an arena character just so that way they could have at least given him havoc and some good skills and at least be OP like. <sighs> RIP Baragon fans, that's all I gotta say because we're never gonna get an OP Baragon. But that being said, let's just go ahead and take a look at the actual banner and everything that it has to offer. Starting it off with the individual banners. Yeah, not the best. I have to be 100% honest.、Uh, there's Christmas Rengiku, which can be used. For melee, a spot at GQ, but like, bro, Thousand Year Blood War Round 14 is gonna come back this month. Don't summon for her. And then Nell is, yeah. And then getting ready just sucks. Baragon, on the other hand, the individual is not too shabby, but like, it's still a skip regardless, cause like, Edrad, there's better characters, and then Kukaku. She just pretty much serves no purpose in terms of, you know, being a flurry character and being an actual GQ character in it of itself, so like, mmm. Mm. Also, I like how they decided to、uh, name the individual banners Selection 1 and 2. I guess they just basically got tired of、uh, naming the individual banners and just decided to be a bit lazy, which, eh, it's whatever. But now let's just go ahead and take a look at the overall characters that we have here. So, Baragon, he's gonna be a ranged strong attack character and will have weakening and drain on all of the attacks, minus the SA2, because the SA2 is a debuff. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like debuffs on SP based characters because, again, it's only going to affect one wave of mobs and not multiple waves. And、uh, you're gonna have a very long cooldown on that second strong attack. That's basically my main gripe with this character. But that being said, he is a holo killer, has strong attack damage of 20% as a natural soul trait, and the innate skills comes armed with freeze immunity, sprinter plus one. And full stamina only reduced strong attack cooldown of 6%. Same skill as Safui Retsu, which isn't bad. I think it's pretty good. At the end of the day, it does lower down the cooldown on the second strong attack to, I want to say, maybe 18 seconds. I don't know. It really depends for when you have like a full, complete strong attack recharge build on the character. And then the attainable skills he does have Frenzy plus one,、uh, Bruiser 20%, Devastation 40, Debotair plus five seconds, Guard Break. We can defense, which is actually very good because it means that this character will actually have the same soul bomb as Safui Retsu. So get him to T20, full stamina damage boost, and we can defense. His soul bomb is gonna hit just as hard as hers, which is crazy. Strong attack creatures time of minus 12%, diminisher, which is basically going to、uh, prolong the debuff against the enemies, and then has full stamina damage boost of 20%. So yeah, not gonna lie. The skills are actually pretty good. Just one flaw, he just doesn't have Havoc. But other than that, it's there. He has 20% Berserker from the Soul Trait and 20% Full Stamina Damage Boost from the Six Star skill. So, like, he does have a good amount of damage. So, like, at least say that much. And then、uh, GGO,、uh, he's gonna be a tech melee normal tech character. Also, is the second tech character to get normal tech damage of 30%. And、uh, he comes armed with Human Killer. I think they should have picked anything but Human Killer, in my personal opinion, just because of the simple matter of fact that for guild quests, we have seen Kamen Tatsuki's. 
and they're literally free to play like they're easy five out of five characters that you guys can attain by just beating the actual iceberg of training 10 times that's all you guys got to do beat the iceberg of training 10 times and you literally have uh two Senkama Tatsuki's 5-5 five five, just like that and you don't even need this character to begin with but I guess for anyone that can't beat the iceberg of training this character can still be actually used even though he doesn't buff on the uh, second straw attack as you guys can see right here but um yeah he does have guard break which is still pretty good poison immunity long stride and even has sprinter plus two with flurry 60 percent bruiser berserker 50 percent poise star barrier plus 10 follow up melee damage plus 10 percent and 30 percent in guild quests so like the skills are actually pretty much there there's there's no complaints i pretty much have to give the ggo or geo whatever the hell he's called like honestly i just wish that he had a second strong attack where he can boost and also had like per se a walking vortex because i feel like that is gonna be a bit more mandatory than actually getting this character because like there's a good reason why people are gonna be using like per se aizen as a main and then the actual supports uh two nat characters that are literally 5-5 and literally have the required killer for that gq alone so there's that other than that geo is good it's just not the best that's all i gotta say i mean what am i saying he's actually still pretty good but i don't know i just i think i kind of was expecting a bit more from this character but it's just my opinion so yeah and then the actual main banner i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's actually not too bad since there are some good premium characters in their like fifth anniversary Ibiakuya, the tech ruruka the power kaname and then we also have a couple seasonals in there like white day uh the swimsuit uh rukia and then the machine society yoruichi so like i do think that in terms of value it is there but i don't think it's really justified to do five steps on the banner just because of the fact that again anniversary is going to be coming up quite soon so if you guys want to summon on something i would say just go for azashiro or kenpachi's individual banner whenever they do come out and then save your orbs for the anniversary i think that's basically the best way to go about it it's going to be the standard 4.5 into 1.5 percent pool rate so nothing has basically changed it's basically the good old same old uh 25 step uh step up format so yeah with that being said Let's just jump onto YouTube and check out the gameplays. Here we are on the official YouTube channel for Bleach Brave Souls, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at the actual character. So let's go ahead and get started, make sure the subtitles are enabled. What up, Akao-chan? Let's get into uh, talking about the characters, why not? Yeah, we already know the skills, we just wanna see the gameplay, even though he's gonna be like a flurry based character, so it doesn't matter. The Nat String is actually not too bad. Although I do feel like it lacks a bit of range. I say one is clearly a 2500 length beam. I say two 800 in front for sure. Why is it that these NAD units get SP based kits like? I don't know, man. And then the third Tron attack, uh, basically the same as uh, Safi Soy Funds. Or literally copy and paste of that kit. Only difference is that it doesn't have like uh, the multi barriers. Wait, let me look at the special. I've never seen it. I think it's okay, not the best. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just that he doesn't boost, he doesn't give out the barrier, so yeah. And then there's Baragon. Is it just me or his model looks unchanged? Plus, I'm not gonna lie. When comparing his stance compared to the OG Mind one, it's kind of lackluster as F. I have to be honest. I don't know if it's just me, but let me know in the comment section below, lads. And now the uh, character itself, Nat Strength, don't really care because like he's an SP based one. So yeah, it is nice that we see Drain and Weaken on him. Um... Ah, that's bad. I think that's the 18% mag one. But anyways, as I was saying earlier, it is really nice to see both Drain and Weakening on a premium character. So like, hey, we could expect uh, some more good stuff. That's all I gotta say. Now the SA2. That is a new strong attack. It's so weird because it looks so similar to uh, the 960 into AoE, but it isn't. And then the third strong attack is full screen. 
Yeah. Let's take a look at the special. Okay, that is very cool. I'm not gonna lie. That is actually pretty insane. All right. Uh, but uh, yeah, those were the characters, and uh, let's just take a look at everything else. Here's Baragon, which is kind of the one I'm pretty much interested in the most because of the fact that he has that particular SA2. So let's just go and take a look at the overall tax. Ah, yeah, that's the 18% mag. That is so terrible. No, <laughs> why did he have to get that straw tag and he doesn't even have the 80% SP buff? That is so bad. Ah, Jesus. And then the second Tron attack. Woo, woo, Jesus, 1,000 into 425. The mags are 60% into 60%. Keep in mind, this is a second Tron attack. Okay? And the debuffs. Like, what? Yo. And also spawns like a Vortex that is like 10 hits after the Tron attack. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This Botagon is actually pretty damn good as a premium character. I did give him a bit of disrespect on my community post because I just saw the attacks and I just basically saw the skills. I was like, okay, nah, this is not good. But then, oh, okay. This bot again is actually very interesting. And then the third Tron attack is a uh, full screen. So I'm not gonna lie. He's looking to be like a pretty good character. Only bad thing about him is that he doesn't have Havoc. So like compared to the likes of per se, 5th Anniversary Ichigo, and who else do we have as a power uh, holo killer? Bro, it's been that long. I need to take a look at what we have in terms of power holo killers again, because it's been so long. Like, let's just take a look at them real quick. Holo, and, uh... Oh, not that many OP power characters besides 5th uh, Anniversary Ichigo. So, like, I do want to say that Baragun, in terms of the overall stuff that he has, he's definitely a bit better than Kokuto and Yoruichi, it's just that he doesn't have Havoc, and the SA1 is pretty lackluster, but he makes it up with that SA2 and the SA3. It's, it's actually pretty insane. I'm actually quite surprised that they gave him a new second Tron attack, so he's pretty interesting. And then there's uh, GGO, Geo, whatever the hell you guys can call him. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call him Geo, because like I just don't know how to say this freaking whatever this thing is, this tiger's name, but uh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't really need to see what the strong attacks are because it's a nad based character. As long as it has guard break, that's all it really matters. But yeah, SA1, again, 2500 length beam. Second strong attack, 800 in front. And then the third strong attack, vacuum into explosion. Basically the same stuff. Yeah. It's literally Safwi Soifun copy and pasted without the actual buff and without the barrier. So that's basically what this character is. Literally. And it's a tech character. And I just wish that he had a different killer, like... You know what he would have gotten? Wait, what are his innate skills again? I forget. Poison immunity, honestly speaking? I would have wanted him to be a holo killer. Even though we have Sajin, but like, he'd definitely be very good with that star bear plus 10, honestly speaking. Oh, and uh, for you pay-to-play players out there, if you guys want to skip and buy this ticket pack, which is, by the way, going to guarantee either GGO or Baragam, you guys can do so. And it's literally 100%, only two characters, and it's literally a 50% chance to either get Baragam or GGO. So if you guys want to pick up the ticket, pretty good value. Even though it is quite expensive, it's going to be like, what, 40 euros? That's all I got to say, so be wise whether you guys want to pick up the ticket pack or not, but it still is going to be better than, like, I don't know, summoning on the banner and uh, just getting cucked when you can get this and get yourself a guaranteed character but um yeah that basically ends the video uh i don't think i'm gonna be doing a should you summon video because honestly you guys should skip the banner in my personal opinion because you don't really need the characters anyways if you want a power holo killer we have fifth anniversary ichigo uh that is still out in roaming in other banners and then if you want a human killer for guild quests you can literally use this in common Tatsuki, even though she doesn't have guard break. And in terms of, like, you know, being a tech character, I would say wait for Abirama or uh, Tech Ruka to come back, even though Tech Ruka is already in the banner. What am I saying? Just wait for Abirama to come back and just, like, you know, summon for him. He's going to be a lot more worth it 
than uh, Geo, in my personal opinion, since he is a ranged character with Garbeg. So, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have actually enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos. This has been your boy, The Dash Master, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Expect a Max Transcendent T20 character showcase to drop in the next coming days. It's just, I've been busy, so. Peace out, lads. Oh, 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 oh,